Right, in this video we're going to do some uh, sequencing and ping the filters but the first thing we're going to do is set up the monopoly so that um, we can use the gate signals within the bug modular to um, step the arpeggiator which I've got set to um, polyphonic mode, it's latched, I've input a few notes and I've made a little, uh, what is it, it's uh, V trig to S trig converter cable. Basically, this turns the regular gates within here into the sort of things that the uh, mono poly needs. So that's coming out mono cable from the one of the UTLX converters, long cable going over to the mono poly. I'll plug that in there. And then, if we take um, basically any gate signal now, will step the monopoly sequencer. So let's take gate output from joystick touch down there. Each time I press the touch plate it's created a gate and we'll plug that into the UTLX. Obviously that was manually. Um, you could do that from, for example, um, another waveform, say from the SIN1. running um, from one of the gate outputs of the Seq1. Okay, let's take a step back and we'll first of all set up basically a sort of kick drum sound um, showing how to ping the filter of the SV filter. Um, so, let's set that uh, band pass, that's a good sort of thing. Uh, got the frequency set fairly low to start with, resonance up pretty high. Um, we we'll plug the, the band pass output straight into the output mixer. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the envelopes again, and that's actually going to go into what would usually be the audio input. Um, but this is the case where we basically ping the filter. So if I manually trigger that, if I turn it tune that, you get a sort of wood blocky sort of sound there. That's with the resonance set pretty high. If we turn it right up, you get a more pronounced ping. If it's turned low, you actually get some quite nice kicks that way. Um, you can also add a little bit of the envelope into the um, filter mod which gives a bit of a clack to the sound and some people suggest taking that again and down into the cue basically to just briefly um, take the, uh, the resonance up to full. Okay now let's um, get some rhythm triggering that envelope. Uh, again we've got the um, 606 providing sort of clocks, uh, clock trigger signals. Um, I've got the low tom set to trigger every single note. Um, I'll plug that into the divisions so that's going to give us divisions of the regular beat of the 606. Um, what I'll do now is use the lower half, the DC mixer of one of the DD2s to combine two of these gate signals the divisions and use that signal then to um, trigger the attack decay. So let's use number four and we'll plug that mix out into the gate and then let's take a second one out, uh, number nine. And that gives a bit of a skew to the rhythm so it's still tied into the main clock might be able to let's listen into that
Okay, so that rhythm's going there. Um, now let's get the arpeggiator to trigger. We'll take the let's get the sequencer running, and we'll take the gate A output of that, plug it into the UTLX, and let's clock the sequencer from one of the divisions here. Let's use um, uh, number three. Now each time that steps, and that triggers, that triggers the arpeggiator. Okay, I've just repatched the um, monopoly so it goes through the PT delay there. Um, now let's put a sort of bass drone and use um, VCO and we'll feed that into the wave folder for a sort of harmonic effect off there. So triangle wave out into the input, top input of the wave folder. Wave folder output we'll take the dual low pass gate one of those and then the output of that out to the output mixer leave that up for the moment manually adjust Okay, let's automate the folding of that, the wave folding. Um, we're going to use the lower section, the DC mixer of the DD2 here. Take the mix output and feed that into the FCV1 of the wave folder. That's the unattenuated one. We'll couple in the LFO, which is going on a slow triangle. Dial in a little bit of that. And then we'll take the second envelope output and feed that into the second channel. So basically each time this is triggered, we'll get quite a big sort of sound. Um, let's take gate output B from the sequencer, get that to trigger the binary divisions, get another clock division going, and we'll take uh, number four of that and get that to trigger the envelope. The envelope is set to the slow mode here, so... Then we're going to uh, modulate the LPG a little bit, so what we'll do for that is take um, the gate output at the top here, the variable length gate output, and get that, turn the LPG down, that just gives it a bit more of a pingy sort of response there. One final little source of modulation would we'll switch one of these down to LFO road, slow it down quite a bit, and just put that into the second uh, mod input of the um, wave folder. So take the triangle wave, turn that up a little bit, and that will just give us a sort of pulse width modulation effect sort of slowly modulate the sound of the wave folder. Modulation. Slow this one down to LFO rate as well, and get that to modulate So 
this slow LFO is changing the rate of this LFO, which is then modulating the wave folder here. If we just listen to that on its own. still got just about space to do a little bit more. What we'll do is we'll take the high tom trigger, just go in there, and we'll get that just to ping the state variable filter straight off. Um, we've actually used up all the channels of the output mixer, but we've got a second input into PT delay. So I'll take that again to the band pass output. backtrack a little bit. Let's get that going through the VCA up, up here. So VCA input. Take the VCA output down into PT delay. And we'll get this slow LFO to modulate that. So basically open and close the VCA, so let more or less of the state variable filter ping out. And then let's use the CV part of the Seq1 to alter the pitch of the ping. We'll use the glide output there. Plug that into the FCV of the ping of the ping filter. Adjust that a bit. 